Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to reduce noise in your sensor measurements with an active low pass filter. And this is gonna be part one in a three part series. Now besides just filters, we're also gonna talk about amplification of low level sensor signals. So this is all about sort of signal conditioning your sensor output to make a good measurement with an ADC. And one caveat before I get started is, you know, my expertise is more in embedded digital type electronics I dabble in analog, but I just want to be careful to say that, you know, filters is a complex topic and there's a lot of experts out there. I'm in no way an expert in filters. So this is a tutorial for beginners given by high level beginner. Okay, that's my caveat. Let's get started. Okay, here's an overview of what I'm designing this circuit for. Now, depending on your application, you know, you might have your, your filter design a little bit different and I'll give you the parameters and things we need to, to be aware of when you're designing your filter. But for this design, I'm targeting this current sensor here off to the, to the left. And this is a great current sensor because it's fairly low cost. It's non-evasive, meaning the conductor goes through this hole and it uses the magnetic field given off by the current flowing through the conductor to uh, measure current. You can see 10 amps here equals one volt. So that means at full range, 10 amps, you're gonna get one volt out. And if it's AC, it's gonna be a one volt AC signal. And I'm gonna use this for measuring a, a line power on a device. So here in the US, I'm gonna see a 60 hertz signal. The problem though with these sensors is because it measures a field and because it has this wire that's not shielded, it picks up a lot of outside noise. I mean, you can almost think of this wire acting like an antenna and picking up a lot of high frequency noise. So the idea here is the reason we want to filter is we want to filter out the noise so we're measuring the signal because if we measure the noise, we're not going to get a true or accurate reading of the signal we're trying to measure. So we want to filter it before we send it to the ADC. And then also in the circuit, I'm going to have an amplifier. And the reason we want to do that is let's say your ADC measures from zero to two volts or 3.3 volts. Well, this sensor only does a max of one volt. So if we use it with an ADC that has a reference that's 3.3 volts, we're not getting the full range of the ADC, so we're not getting the full range of the resolution. So not only do we want to filter out the signal, we want to amplify it so it takes up the whole ADC range and we get max resolution. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing here. Like I mentioned, this is going to be a three-part series, and this is part one. So here we're going to design the filter circuit and test it in simulation. And I'll show you how we're going to calculate the parts and things we need for the filter and what filter we'll be working with. Uh, namely, we'll be working with a Salen Key double pole active filter. And then we'll be using LT Spice to simulate it. So if you're new to electronic simulation programs, there's a lot of different versions of Spice out there. LT is made by Linear Technologies, which is a great company, and they offer LT Spice for free. So you can go ahead, go ahead and download it. And I will mention in this tutorial, I'm assuming you have a basic understanding of op amps and also how to use LT Spice. If you don't, just go ahead. There's plenty of tutorials out there on op amps if they're new to you. And LT Spice has some great uh, YouTube tutorials too if you wanna just check those out first. In part two, We'll be designing the PCB for the filter circuit. So we'll lay it out and we'll use the data sheet of the op amps to help us lay it out because op amps can be real sensitive to parasitics. And then in part three, we're gonna have our filter circuit and we're gonna test it. So that's the three part series. So let's get started with part one. Okay, well right now we're looking at a page from a filter tutorial by Texas Instruments. So we're on page like, I don't know, 15 or so. So this is a great tutorial, it's very long. If you wanna learn about filters and the different types and the math behind the filters, this is a great tutorial. I'm gonna have a link to this in the video description if you wanna check it out. I'm just gonna kinda of just show it just to let you know one of the references that I'm working off of. Once again, this is by Texas Instruments. They're a great company, they know a lot about analog circuits. There's a lot of different types of filters out there. We're gonna be using this Unity Gain, which just means that, that the amplifier is not having any gain. Salen Key Low Pass Filter. Okay, what you're looking at now is an online filter calculator. 
you can enter certain parameters and it'll spit out the values you need. So this is the filter we're gonna design. This is an op amp if you're not familiar with op amps. You know, capacitor, capacitor, resistor, resistor. Now, like I said, I'm assuming you have some basic understanding of op amps here. So what I did here is I enter my cutoff frequency. That's what FC stands for, cutoff frequency. Now, remember, I'm measuring a 60 hertz signal, AC line power. The, the thing is, though, I'm picking 500 hertz because when you design a filter, it's not so simple. You don't just design it, and then once you specify where the cutoff frequency, all that frequency is gone. And maybe I should also mention what is a low pass filter. So a low pass filter will pass frequencies below FC, hopefully unattenuated, and then anything above FC, it starts to attenuate or block those signals. So that's what a low pass filter is. And there's band pass, there's high pass, we're gonna be looking at a low pass filter. Now, why am I picking 500? A filter's not perfect, like I mentioned, so it's gonna have a roll off, and we're gonna see that in the simulation. The reason I pick 500 is because I don't want it to start rolling off at 60 hertz. I want it to roll off farther out. Since I'm really concerned about the high frequency noise, I'm not too concerned about low frequency noise. I'm really concerned about high frequency noise. I wanna pick 500 just as a safe area away from the 60 hertz, and then I know anything much higher than, than 500 hertz will be blocked. I would just leave these default. I'm not gonna go into these. Q factor is just the quality factor of the filter, uh, and which has to do with how fast it sort of attenuates or, or the roll off, and, and we'll see that in the simulation. I type in the 500, I hit calculate. It already calculated and you saw that. And so what it does is it calculates these values, R1, R2, C1, C2, so we don't have to use this uh, transfer function or do the math ourselves. If, you, if I plug in something else, let's say 1000 hertz or one kilohertz, you see we'll get different values, but we're gonna be doing 33K. Excuse me, not 33K, 500 hertz. That's the resistor we're going to be doing, 33K. So it spits out a lot of different things. We're really concerned about these, the parts we're going to need with our op amp. You can see some other stats. I'm not going to go into too much of these. The important thing, though, is this cutoff frequency. So you can see it's not perfect. So I said 500 hertz, and it's basically saying your cutoff frequency is 482. And what that means is, since this is a double pole filter, we'll see the frequency will be cut by, I believe it's three, three times, or not the frequency, excuse me, the amplitude of frequencies, of a frequency of 482 will be cut by three. So that's the filter, you know, attenuating that signal. And we'll see that in the simulation and it'll, it'll be much more easier to understand there. But that's what the cutoff frequency. Now, if, if we had a single pole filter, it would be half the amplitude at this frequency, but we have a double pole. And this is actually showing the, the curve. So if you think of this as the input frequency, so we have frequency on the x-axis, notice that this is in uh, logarithmic scales. So here is 100 hertz, here's 1K, here's 10K. And what we can see is, if we think about us putting in a, single at all, a signal at all these different frequencies, we get no attenuation here, we get zero. But once we start to get here, we start to see a roll off, and, and we'll see that more in the simulation. Okay, I think I'm, I'm babbling a little too much. So let's look at LT Spice. We got our values, we're using the calculator for designing our filter. Let's look at LT Spice for our design. Okay, here's our circuit. Like I mentioned, I'm assuming you have some kind of understanding of LT Spice. You know, here's my parts that I can pick off if I wanted to. Ooh, whoops, let's escape from that. Uh, you know, I can set my values, I'm gonna delete that. If I wanna get my op amp, I would go to here and open that, and I have all these op amps to choose from. Most of them are linear technology op amps because it's their software, but for this example, I just actually chose a ideal op amp. So that's these two op amps you're seeing here. So I'm gonna press cancel. And so I built this circuit up. Let me recenter it. So here I put in a voltage source. So this represents the signal coming from our sensor. Here's our Salen key low pass filter, and that's our cutoff frequency, about 482, or at least that's what it should be. 
So here is our design of the filter. Here's our two uh, capacitors. Since this is unity gain, we just have this fed back into the, the negative part. And so there's our filter. Now this other section is our amplifier. So I'm adding a gain of three. So I'm having a 1K resistor. And once again, this is your, if you're familiar with op amps, this is the gain equation. So R4, R2 divided by R4 plus one. And, and with these values, we're gonna get three. So basically, we're gonna get a nice clean filtered signal here, and then this is gonna times it by three, and this goes to the ADC. I, I have this 20K resistor here, but just ignore this. This is really just to be the load. So you don't really need this in your circuit. That's just for simulation purposes. So here's our circuit. I put these labels here so you can see those. The next thing we wanna do is do the simulation. Now, I'm gonna warn you, I already set up part of the simulation ahead of time. What we're doing is an AC analysis. So we're gonna see a curve much like we did on the, the filter calculator webpage. But what I'm doing here is I'm saying, okay, start frequency, one hertz. Stop frequency, 10,000 hertz. And so what's gonna happen is, you know, they're gonna shove a frequency, a signal with that frequency through the, the, the circuit and print the output. And we're gonna do that for each one of these frequency values for 500 points, okay? So we're gonna have 500 points spaced uh, across these different frequency steps. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna press okay. And then I'm gonna press this running man, which is basically run the simulation. There it is. It didn't pick, let me, okay. I'm gonna just gonna do something real quick. Let me delete all these traces. And we're gonna, so if you're unfamiliar on how to specify the simulation, so now we have a blank simulation, but if I bring my thing, my cursor down here, I get this probe, it's supposed to be a measurement probe, and I put it there. So now I'm making a measurement here at the input, and this is what we're seeing with this green line. And if you're not familiar with dB measurements, they're a ratio measurement, and they're often done in logarithmic, well, they are done in logarithmic, but zero dB basically means the signal's not affected. Whatever the power level was, or amplitude was, it's all that right away across. I don't think that was great English there, but, and this is what we would expect at VN. So as VN tries all these different frequencies, we'd expect it to have the same amplitude because we have a sort of a perfect source here. Now, if I put my next probe here, now all of a sudden we get some action here. So I'm now probing at the output of the filter. So notice at these lower frequencies, the blue and green are the same value. They don't change, they're zero dB. But once they get to a higher frequency, we start to get the roll off, okay? Now I know what you're saying. Well, this should be rolling off about 482 Hertz. We get a little bit dropping before that because here's 100 Hertz. And that's just how a filter is. It, it's not perfect. It starts to roll off. And note, one of the reasons we picked a double pole filter is double pole filter is gonna roll off faster than a single pole. So if I click here and I move this, and let me put this up here so everybody can see it. Yeah, right there. So if I move this along the blue line till about negative six dB, because that's, that's about three times reduced of the input signal, factor of three we can see we have about 480 hertz, which is what we saw in the calculator. So this is our cutoff frequency and it's negative 6 dB. So if we had a three volt signal at 480 and we put it through the filter, we would only have one volt coming out. If we put in a nine volt, we would have three volts coming out because it's it basically reduces it or attenuates it by 6 dB. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Let's go back here. Let me X this out, and I'm gonna put one more probe here on the output of our amp. So this is essentially what's going to the ADC. And if I do that, now we see a red trace. And notice the red trace is much like the, uh, by the way, I think I was misspeaking when I was saying divide by three. It must be divide by two point something, Any, anyway. You, you can look up a uh, dB to voltage or amplitude calculator to, to get it. But 
So here is the, the signal out of the amplifier. So just like we would expect, we're timesing it by three, so we would expect it at lower frequencies to be three times higher than our other two signals. And then it will stay about that, but it'll start to roll off because of the filter. So does that make sense? Whenever we have a 60 hertz signal, which will be somewhere around here. Oh, I should show this too. Let me actually show this. So let's go to 60 hertz. So we can actually see that we do have a little bit of attenuation here. It's in the milli dB, but it does attenuate our 60 hertz signal a little bit, but that's all right because we can raise it back up with an amplifier, the amplifier section. And, and what I'll do in the final design for the amplifier is I'll actually have an adjustable resistor so that way I can tune it to get it exactly what I want it to be at the output for full range. Okay, once again, this is our circuit. In part two, we're gonna lay it out and we're gonna follow the data sheet for the op amps. I'm gonna be using the TLV314 op amp from Texas Instruments for both U1 and U2. And when you lay these out, you wanna make sure you do it a certain way so you get good behavior. And we'll talk about that in part two. So that's gonna be it for part one. If you have any questions or comments that you can add, please use the comments section below. And I'll see you back here for part two. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.